Yay, it worked. Hello, guys. Hiya. Good state of my hair. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, I didn't realise it was going to stick up like that. I've got it kind of swept back off my, my head just to get it out of my face. Um, anyway, hello, guys. Hello, Creative Charge Nights. How is everybody today? Um, I am trying a different angle, uh, or, well, a different position of the camera. Rather than it being on the monitor, I have already fixed it to my kind of bendy thing. Um, and uh, hopefully that will minimise um, the, the need to move the camera too much. Um, I have my board at the side of me. Um, and um, it means I'm having to sort of sit back a little bit from the camera. Um, in fact, I maybe just tip it down just a little. Oh, there we go. That's a bit better. Um, of course, it's now bouncing about. Sorry about that, guys. Um, unfortunately, now that I'm this far back from the monitor with my glasses on, I can't actually see. So let me just lean forward a little bit um, so that I can read. Uh, I'm I'm long sighted, you see. So with my glasses on and I'm too far away, everything's blurred. Uh, so we have Mona in the house. Hi, Mona. We have Chrissy. Hello, Chrissy. Um, we have Laura. Hi, Laura. And oh, Madonna. Hi, Madonna. How are you today? Um, fantastic. So. What I plan to do, um, rather than kind of ramble on too much, is just adjust the camera slightly. Um, I'm hoping that um, you may actually still be able to see me in shot. Um, so um, we will we'll see what we can come up with anyway. Um, okay. Oh, it's snowing. It's not snowing up here. <laughs> It's snowing in, in England. It's not snowing in Scotland. Um, I suspect it's probably snowing further um, up in Scotland. Um, I believe that there's now snow on the Ben and um, probably up Aberdeenshire, that kind of way. Um, I would imagine that there's probably snow in the mountains uh, and uh, probably Glencoe, that, that kind of thing. Um, but certainly not here in um, Fife uh, in next to the coast. So let's... Let's move uh, the camera just ever so slightly. So um, for anybody who gets a little bit motion sickness, uh, please forgive me. It shouldn't take too much to move the camera this time around. It's more the, the movement. And I'm just wondering... Hmm. Okay, I can I can sort of fit the palette in, but we're kind of chopping off. Oh, there we go. There we go. I'll just move there. Oh, now you can see the. <laughs> Please don't look under there. <laughs> oh, never mind. Uh, let's see if we can just tidy up just a little bit. There. Does that look quite so bad? <laughs> okay. Um, now, is that going to be too much light? Yeah, probably. Okay. I think because um, the board is um white paper it's picking up uh, the glare of the um the light but i need the light on for you to even be able to see what's going on at all um i know i'm faffing about a little bit more than usual today um but that's because i as i said earlier i'm trying a different uh a different position just to, to see if I can't make it a little bit easier for you guys to see everything that's going on. Um, obviously, I've got the reference photo here. We've got what's going on here. And I, I really like having the palette on show so that you guys can actually see 
what I'm doing. Um, now, I do have my water here, so I'm actually going to move it to that side of me. Normally, I have it on the right hand side of me because that's that's where I am. Um, in fact, maybe maybe I will have it at the right hand side of me, but just not not as far round. Right, there we go. You can see where um, my water is. I just don't want it to be in my trolley because then my trolley is, it's a bit awkward. So I'm kind of twisting myself around um, no matter how close the trolley is. Whereas it might be easier to dip it in there. Um, although I suspect actually it's probably going to be easier to dip it in there maybe. Huh. I'm, I'm just trying not to twist my back too much. So uh, let me see, any questions before we get started? Um, Chrissy says, I wish I could bend like that. I'll bend like Tania. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh dear, never mind. Um, Chrissy says, I have thumbs. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mona. Thumbs up, everybody. Um, just a, a friendly reminder that if you like the videos, even if it's uh, even as if it's the um, pre-recorded videos, if you like my videos, please, please, please remember and hit the thumbs up. I know it's not always easy to remember to hit the thumbs up, but it does help my videos get seen. Um, Chrissy says, "Don't need to get everything on. Uh, don't struggle." Thanks, Chrissy. Um, I, the main things I want on are this and this. Um, it doesn't matter whether you see the the water or not. Um, just I want it to be at a decent enough angle. So I'm going to I'm going to put it back to to this side here um, and try it there. So, um, what's the colours on the palette? Right, that's a very good question. And I have left um, all the, um, oh, I can't even get my words out today. I've left all the, the paint uh, tubes at the side of me so I can show you. So, up here, we have um, golden ultramarine blue. We then have some, oh, some burnt umber. Next to that, we have the um, yellow ochre. Next to that, we have the cad red light. And then we have ooh, titanium white. So these are all the paint colours that I have got on my palette at the moment. Of course, I will tell you if there is any change to the palette as I go. Now, last week you'll probably remember, if you were here last week, that um, I showed you how to start the drawing of uh, this using the photo reference. Um, I showed you where all the potential guidelines um, were. Um, and how to translate that onto paper. Now, I will confess, oh, excuse me, oh, got the hiccups. I will confess that the moment we went off live, I realized that actually um, this hand was ever so slightly too thin. So I have actually gone in and changed the, um, but the line. So I, I thought you would find that particularly um, <laughs> giving me a fright to stop the hiccups. <laughs> what about your pinny, Tania? Yes, my pinny is actually uh, over there. I probably should put it on, shouldn't I? Uh, right. So 
So I have my um, Jackson's art apron, which is to me a very cool and very practical apron. So oh, I will just get this tied. There we go. It's funny, I, I, it's interesting, I tend to um, wear this more if I'm standing up um, rather than when, um, yeah, penny, um, it's, it's, a, it's a very Scottish word, um, penny. So, um, definitely need some paint splash. Yeah, I I have to say, um, for all the for all the um times that I've had this on and the length of time that I've actually owned it, considering that any of my clothing that I wear, um, has kind of got paint on it, but yet my penny, um, is um relatively in fact it's paint free I say that now because I'm going to end up dropping paint on it today um but yeah it's, it's interesting I tend not to to wear it when I'm sitting down it feels a little bit um restricted restrictive um uh it's purely luck that I keep my apron paint free um I don't understand why I've managed to keep it paint free because all my other clothing has um paint on it um, in fact, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you a, a, a rather um, silly example. Um, I actually uh, used to wear my pajamas um, because I would get up uh, from obviously sleeping. I'll get up, I'll be in my jammies, and I I would go through into the, the craft room and I would just automatically sit down and start painting. Uh, and, um, and inevitably, I ended up with the uh, paint over my um, my jammies. Um, but yeah, I have a, a penny now, which I bought um, because I didn't want to get ruin any more jammies um, and uh, or my clothes, and I've not got a single bit of paint on it. So figure that one out. Right. Uh, Mona's saying that she she always has to have an apron on. Um, poor jammers. Yeah. <laughs> Because he says I've got my jammies on. Yes, there's absolutely nothing wrong with wearing our jammies. In fact, I tell people that they're not jammies, they're lounge trousers. <laughs> right. Now, again, a little reminder from last week. Um, I used um, a, a Lyra 6 H, um, a B6. No. What did I use? Yeah, B6. A B6 Lyra water soluble crayon. I'm I'm pausing because I'm looking to see if my um pencil case is sitting around to show you, but it's not. So I'm afraid you'll just have to take my word for it. Um it was uh, a crayon. It was the um Lyra water soluble crayon, um, big chunky crayon. Uh, I used that in an effort to keep looser with my lines uh, and not um, get bogged down with details. So there's different ways in which you can actually start a painting off when you have used something like uh, the Lyra um, water soluble uh, graphite crayon. It could be the same for um, an, a Stabilo All pencil. When it's water soluble, if you are putting anything fluid anywhere near it, you will activate it. So there's different ways, but I'm only going to show you one way. And Chrissy says, okay, crayon then, nitpicking. <laughs> 
Well, you know, um, I, I think uh, we as artists on YouTube, we do need to nitpick because if we, t heaven forbid that we should tell our viewers the wrong thing that we're using and they're looking for something that doesn't actually exist, um, you know, we get trolled enough as it is, uh, Chrissy. <laughs> so let's, uh, I'm, 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 I'm waffling again, as always. Um, they aren't ruined, you're making a statement. Well, yeah, that's true. I'm, I'm best talking about my jammies because um, I said that um, I've ruined uh, many a pair of jammies. But I guess you're right. Um, they're not ruined. I've just added some character. Right. This particular um, method, I'm just simply going to go in with a damp brush and I'm going to activate my lines. I don't really want to lose too much of where my lines are, but equally, as I drew them in once, I can draw them in again with the paint. So I'm not going to get too hung up. on where or what's happening with my lines. Now that I'm activating them. And if you put enough water on, as you can see, you can get rid of the lines you don't want. Now what this does is it just minimizes um, the, the chances of the, the graphite sort of blending with the oh see I can't get my words out again with the paint so that's me activated I mean, it will blend still because it's the graphite is still on the paper, um, but it won't be as severe um, because I've just diluted the colours or diluted the colours, diluted the um, the graphite. So there we go. Right. So I've done that. Uh, just wondering about just putting it up just ever so slightly. can just see the, the paint still. Um, but what you're really going to be paying attention to is this middle part here, because this is where I'm going to be mixing the paint. Um, okay, so Mona's saying that um, she's now seeing it much clearer now that I've activated the graphite. Now, I really like um, using the graphite crayon um, just simply because it is so big and chunky and it stops me from fussing about the details. Um, it just really helps me to just get in um, the, the lines that I need to. Uh, so 
again, there's two ways that I can go about this. Um, I can put in the background first, um, or I can start on the face first. Um, so I think I think given um, that most people know how to paint in a background, um, I am going to start on the the face. Okay, so oh, Chris is making pizza. I like pizza. I miss pizza. I can't eat pizza, but I like pizza. Um, okay. These are my standard paints for skin tones. Now, if you check out, it may not be quite as apparent on the screen, because um, I'm not sure how much of this the camera is picking up on, um, but her complexion is very peachy. Um, it really um, matches her top here. Um, it's more of a peachy pink, very, very light, like peachy pink, rather than a, a kind of powdery pink. Um, and her skin is very kind of sort of in that sort of peachy um, spectrum. Uh, and uh, she's got very, very, it's interesting because she's got very, very light brows, but yet she's got quite dark roots. Um, clearly she is colouring her hair, um, but I suspect that her natural hair colour isn't quite as dark as the photograph is hinting at. So I'm going to um, start with a, a little bit of my cad red with some of my yellow ochre. I'm probably putting more yellow ochre um, to this than cad red. And then I will pick up some of the white. And then that gives me a kind of an indication of where I'm at with my peachy colour. Now it's very pigmented, um, so even if I add more white, it's still going to look quite bright and kind of very. Um, the, the, you know, the, the colour is going to be a little too vibrant. Um, so that is, is just a bit too, too vibrant. So I'm going to add just a small amount to grey it out a little bit. So a very small amount of the burnt umber to grey it out. And then I'm going to add a little bit more uh, of my white. So that's that's looking a little bit better. And now there's a shape here that is quite dark. So I've started with this lighter color um, in the first instance. I don't usually start quite as light, um, but I thought I would give it a go and see if it made any particular difference to the layers. And again, there's another sort of darker area just here. Because I usually start much darker and then I gradually go lighter as I go along. Just adding a little bit more burnt umber into there um, because that is definitely much darker in this area here. And there is definitely. a 
a darker area that comes out there. Now, any questions? Um, Mona says she's a fake, she's a fake blonde. <laughs> She might have bleached her um, her eyebrows right enough. She might have bleached, bleached her eyebrows. There was definitely uh, a lighter area there, and definitely. A lighter area up here and across her forehead. So I'm again I'm looking for the shapes. So there's that shape here, and it's coming down her nose and along this area as well. And there's also, it's a bit lighter here. Now, I don't know if you remember me saying the type of paper that I'm I'm using. Um, it's actually watercolour. And um, I have to confess, I'm not liking this as much as I do my, um, my acrylic paper. Um, so I'm just saying that right now. It's not particularly bad. It's it's just not feeling. It's it, it's just not I'm just not feeling it at the minute. Now up here is a little bit redder, so I've just added just a little bit more red into my color mix. And I think what might be happening is that I've not put any gesso on this. Um, and I've, I've done it deliberately because I wanted to see how the paper actually um, held up. Um, and I think this particular paper, I probably would be better off um, using a gesso. So there's, there's a bit of a, a dark line that sort of does that. So you can see there, it's almost like an arrow. And then it's really dark. Just on her chin line here. Going back in with the white again because there's a, a lighter area here. And it is lighter there, but it's still. It's darker. It's lighter there, but it's darker than up there. So I'm lightening this area up here a fair bit. 
but I'm trying not to to get it too ridiculous because then this part here is even lighter. So you can see it's it's starting to to take on that patchy look that happens with acrylics. Oh, welcome back, Madonna. Oh, we're having we're having the cold wars, are we? <laughs> Mona says, I sometimes use watercolour paper too. And yes, it's better with a little gesso. Now, this particular watercolour is really cheap uh, watercolour. It's, um, I think it's £90. That's, it's fine for um, practice. Uh, but um, I don't think it's particularly good for anything else. So I'm just combining my paints again. That's a little bit pinker just in this area here. Um. Hmm, okay. It's needing a little bit pinker area, I think. Um, here. And it's definitely, definitely, definitely needing a much lighter area there. as well as here. And this is much pinker there. So it's about finding the right, the right shades of brown, whether it's more grey, whether it's pinker, whether it's browner. Um, and it's really, as I said, I've said this before, I feel my way through a painting. I don't necessarily... have a, an exact formula. So she's starting to, to take shape. Okay, so Chrissy's, um, at the moment, uh, Chrissy's been working uh, with oils uh, recently. Hello there, Michael Ann. Hello. Finally caught me before the final for the very end. Yes. <laughs> you did. Welcome. How are you today? Okay, I'm going to do something just a tad different. I'm going to pick up some of this. Um, 
skin tone and add some yellow ochre and I'm going to just put in a layer here. for her hair. So it's kind of a, a sandy colour because that seems to be what we've got. And then I'm going to go back in to mix some more skin tone. And I'm going to put in some skin tone there. And I'm just going to kind of go in and just add in some of the The light areas. I'm not being particularly precious about it. Now I would say that this part here with our nose is a little bit redder, certainly a lot darker. That might be a little too dark but we will go with it for the time being. And then we'll again try and lighten this area up some more. Like so. Now I'm being particularly painterly today. Um, Looking fabulous, Tan uh, Tania. Thank you, Chrissy. Oils without any medium in Beth are a lovely smell. Yes, it's not. Um, it's definitely not the um, the paints that that are the smelly part. It is definitely, um, without a doubt. the actual mediums themselves that uh, are the smelly part. And they're the parts that um, are not so, so helpful. I'm just changing up the tone a little bit of this area. Just adding a bit more pink or a bit more red, should I say. And I'm just expanding Oops. sort of ready area from there over here. So I'm trying to get that that line, that shape there and blending it in um, a bit better. I 
partner. She's definitely. There we go. For saying that I didn't want to start off as um, as dark, I have to say that the, the paint is drying a lot darker than um, I had anticipated, but that's fine. I think you guys have um, have watched me enough that you kind of have a, a good indication as to how I actually work. In fact, because it's the winter and I've got my heat on, I'm going to spritz uh, with the, the water because it's the paint is drying on the palette, which is a nuisance. So I'm just going in. with the bits that I can see that are slightly darker. I will no doubt have to lighten that up some. Uh, I'm trying to not lose the dark parts that are meant to be dark. Like here, for example. Yeah. Getting there. What um, some artists do um, is, depending on the oil um, paints, there is nothing wrong with you doing um, the majority, well, a good portion of the um, the paint, the, the, the painting in acrylic paints, and then go directly on top with the last layer as oils, um, and not using any medium at all. Um, that's uh, something that is a, a potential possibility that. Um, that can be helpful for uh, artists who would like to try oils but are afraid um, of the mediums. Okay. See, this side is darker, but it's not as dark, so I'm lightening it up. Yeah. So it's starting to get there. In fact, what I'll do is I will bring it to the camera. To let you see a little better. So 
we're getting there. Whoop. Knocking my my light. Here we are. Okay, no problem, Chrissy. We'll see you when you come back. So really, th this isn't this isn't meant to be a tutorial. I mean, yes, it's helpful for people seeing it, and um, people have asked me to um, to do uh, more of a, a tutorial and kind of sort of explaining things. Um, but it's not what it's meant to, to be um, Friday Fun Live because it's meant to be fun. So um, it's more. For me, it's more about the chatting and, and finding what you guys are up to. So with that vein. What are you guys up to? What is in the life of my creative tartanites today? I'm just putting in um, a bit of a, a grey blue uh, and this is a much lighter grey blue here. Now this upper lid is a lot darker, but um, I'm just using that to to just get some paint down, essentially. And I'll probably go back in. Mona says, I love watching you paint, Tanya. Thank you. I do enjoy painting. Um, give another spray, I think. Now I see kind of a bit of a, a yellow sort of undertone. here so I'm just going to put that in and here is a definite darker area Right, I think we're getting into the realms of needing to swap to a smaller brush. I quite like trying to stick with the 
the bigger brush as long as I can. Um, mostly to put off doing the details. <laughs> That's okay. I don't mind it. Whoops, that's a bit dark. Don't mind admitting that. Because I think the longer you put off doing the details, the better your painting ends up being. So Madonna, you're working today, designing playgrounds and checking sales reps drawings for issues. Oh, that sounds interesting. Laura says that she's still in Christmas mode with the December challenge. I've also nearly finished my January challenge. Fabulous. Did you guys um, see the video? Did you enjoy watching the video? Now, for anybody who's watching on the replay who is not part of the Creative Tartanite tribe, um, I have started doing exclusive videos for my Tartanite tribe in the Facebook group, um, the um, Creative Tartanite tribe. Um, I just think it's a really good way to um, thank um, my followers, to thank um, my Creative Tartanite tribe. Um, for being in my Facebook group, uh, because otherwise, you know, what else am I going to um, to be able to to justify having a group? You know, if I'm not doing things specifically for my group, um, then why do I have one? So that's kind of where we're at uh, with that. And I'm just, I'm just checking um, because this, this part here looks like she's got a right big dent in her cheek, but to be fair, that's actually what it looks like um, on the actual photograph as well. But I'm, I, I'm taking artistic license and I'm, I'm going to try and make it a little less severe. I don't know how I'm going to make it a little less severe, but uh, I'll persevere until I, I get it right. <laughs> one of those, one of those things. So, anybody watch any decent movies? Madonna says yes. The video was great. Thank you. Oh, hello, Larry. Welcome. There we go. Now, 
I've realised that I'm not actually not painting this straight on. I'm kind of painting at an angle. So I, I just kind of moved myself just a little bit. Um, hopefully I'm not too um, much in the way. Um, because I think if I'm painting from an angle, that's going to um, potentially make it a bit skew with. And I'm also changing changing my um, grip on my brush now because I've decided that I'm I'm being a bit too precious about it all. And I don't want to be. So I'm just changing how I'm holding my brush. The further back, the less control, so the more the more loose the, the strokes are going to be. It's just a bit too brown. Um, so really just kind of backs and backwards and forwards from From the lighter to the darker until I finally get what I'm looking for. Adding a bit more red in. Taking it out. Larry says it looks good so far. Thank you, Larry. Very much appreciated. Um, Madonna saying, I hope your back will be fine. Um, do not want you to get any pain. No, it's not um, that I'm, my back was twisted. Um, the I'm in a, a swivel chair. And so um, I wasn't, I wasn't at the right, angle to the although my back was straight and I was looking at the canvas or the paper should I say it wasn't quite at the right angle for me looking straight onto the paper if that makes sense um, Rachel says that she's back and forth that's fine that's absolutely fine absolutely fine don't worry about it Right, um, I'm going to attempt the lips. This is always interesting. Because it's not always easy to get the right colour. Um, she's definitely got um, more of a, a sort of peachy going on.
So that's kind of looking a bit too red. Um, okay. Whoops. It's okay. It's just the first pass. Um, Rachel says it's very good. Thank you, Rachel. Very much appreciated. Right. Let's see. There we go. No. Whoops. Last. Didn't mean to to do that. So get that darker value back in. Let's give myself just a little bit more control of the brush just for a second, just while I Get that there. So that is that. Um, another squirt of the water, and let's let's head down the neck a little bit. I may have to get some more yellow ochre put out. Right. As you can see, there is a bit of dark being mixed in with the paint, but that's okay. And although this is too light uh, a paint for here, I'm just putting putting it down anyway. Just to get some paint down on the paper. And as I've said before, um, sometimes it's just about getting some paint down so that it can be adjusted in the next layer. Because with acrylic painting, layering is definitely, definitely key. And I think I'll grey this up a little bit with um, a little bit of, maybe that's too much blue. Because there's that dark area just in there. Um, 
and goes down to the finger and then there's definitely the dark area under the finger. There we go. So you can see that um, it's starting to um, to get there. Doesn't have to be neat. Doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be accurate. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just so long as you are enjoying the process, that is what matters. I'll just bring it forward again for you. So you can see some more. You can see where the brush strokes are. That's exactly what I'm going for. I'm going for that painterly look. The details aren't in it yet because the painting is not at a stage where it requires the details. And I think it's important that um, we keep reminding ourselves that it isn't about uh, the, the details at this stage. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Mona says, I wish I could do a painterly look too. You can. I think um, for most people, um, it's not necessarily about the um, ability to do things. It's actually more to do with the ability to believe that they can do things. Um, I, I think when you start believing that you can do things, that's when you are actually able to do things. And I hope that makes sense. I'm just going to pop in some some paint here. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I've got a reasonably dark colour here. Um, And I'm going to put the paint down on the paper. Like so. Why not? I'll work some more on her neck, I think. This is definitely much lighter than I have it at the moment and there's definitely a bit too much colour in this part here so it really needs greyed out a little bit more Try that. That's perhaps a bit better. Let me add a bit more brown because that's a bit browner towards the back here. And it's definitely much darker in that area there. 
And again, maybe just grey it out a little bit. With the blue, you get it really dark in this bit here, just under and in between the fingers. So a really good way to, to make black is with burnt umber and um, oh, blah, 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 ultramarine blue. <laughs> Oh, welcome back, Madonna. Oh, welcome back, Chrissy. That's all right, Chrissy. When are you, when are you going? Um, are you going live tonight? Yes. Oh, cool. What time are you going live at? It is live, I take it, if you're getting set up. About eight-ish. Cool. Fantastic. Right. I'm definitely getting to that point where I'm thinking... I'm definitely kind of having a bit of a I need a break moment. So I'm thinking that I've been live since half past three. So half four, that's an hour and 15 minutes. Um, hate time zones, they'd make my head hurt. <laughs> Yeah, time zones can be a bit of a nuisance, can't they? Um, so I think I'll maybe um, I'll maybe put in the sort of first, the beginning part of her hand, uh, and then I'll probably leave that as part two. And then the next time I go live, uh, I will uh, do the next stage. Well, right now it, it well, um, our time zone uh, is uh, Greenwich Mean Time. So GMT. Um, definitely run out of um, yellow ochre now, but I think I will get away with not getting any more out. Whoops. Um, because I'm just doing the hand. So I'm actually thinking that um, maybe it won't matter what colour that I put down on the hand, just so long as I get some flesh colour in. Which is what I do sometimes. And that's perfectly okay. And as you can see, you know, it's, it is still picking up the. The graphite, but, you know, that's it's fine.
There's nothing wrong with that script. There we go. Definitely much lighter here and then darker under here. Oh, thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah, whoopsie daisy. <laughs> now I've been working on my Art Sherpa design team uh, ATC for this month. So watch out for that video coming soon. I've had a lot of fun doing this bit, this uh, the January video for the ATC. A lot of fun. So I'm, I'm not trying not to give uh, anything away. But if you like my sense of humour, you are going to love. my video. I think you will anyway. We go. That's um. Oh, <laughs> I was away to put my hi Joe, <laughs> late naughty girl. <laughs> oh dear, hi Joe. Hello, welcome. Sorry, you've just come at the tail end, I'm afraid. Um, but do feel free to watch the replay. Um. So one last kind of um, look of where we're at at the moment. Uh, and um, I think we need to call it a day there. So let me just turn it around. Here we are. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. My hair is just, it's wild. It's absolutely wild. Look, if I take it out, let's see. Well, maybe that doesn't look so bad. Maybe I shouldn't have had it scraped off my face, but it was doing my head in because it just kept going in my eyes. So, hello. Um, I can't see from here. <laughs> That's a little bit better. Oh, we've got Mark. Hi, Mark. <laughs> yeah, we, um, I we've been on for uh, an hour and twenty minutes, uh, and um, I'm thinking that uh, really for people's sanity and um, for uh, the fact that it's tea time and things, uh, particularly for um, 
Mona, who's uh, my chat moderator, I, I think that it's probably a good idea to um, kind of stop at this stage uh, and um, take, because this would be where I would naturally take a break anyway, um, before going back to um, any painting. Uh, so uh, hence why I thought it's probably a good idea um, to to just show you guys um, that, you know, it's it's normal. You know, you get to a point uh, where you're like, right, time to take a step back. And um, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so what time will the next live be, Joe asks? Um, that is actually a very good question, uh, because apart from anything else, I actually don't know when the next live is going to be. And the reason I don't know is because I, I, I work shifts. Um, I work random shifts. And I don't actually remember off the top of my head whether or not I'm working next Friday. I have a sneaky suspicion that I'm probably working next Friday, in which case I won't be able to go live next Friday. Um, I'm toying with the idea of maybe not always going live on a Friday and maybe if I'm finding that I'm working that particular week or I'm working um, several weeks in a row that on a Friday, maybe I need to change the day that I go live. Um, the only problem with that is that it gets a little bit that people don't know when I'm going live. Um, but, you know, perhaps it's better, more random than not at all. Uh, you can you can let me know in the comments what you think. Um, obviously, as, as an artist who also works to be able to pay the bills, um, it's not always easy for me to be able to give people exactly what they want. Yes, I understand that um, when we go live at a particular time, at a particular day, that there's consistency and that is much better for people remembering. However, it's, it's not always ideal for me because um, I can't. In all honesty, I cannot go at exactly the same time, exactly the same day, every single week. It's just not possible. Um, so we're going to have to work out some kind of compromise, uh, if I'm totally honest. Um, yes, Chrissy, that's a very good point. That was my next point. People who are subscribers, if you click the bell, you should get notifications. Um, so, you know, the fact that I'm kind of letting you know that there's not going to be a specific time every day, I'm hoping that that will um, mean that you will be more inclined to actually look out for your notifications. Um, I understand if you if you don't and you can't, that's fine. I'm not forcing anybody. I'm not trying to um, say that you have to do this. Um, but Unfortunately, I simply cannot go live exactly the same time, exactly the same day every single week. Um, I sometimes work at weekends. I sometimes don't work at weekends. Um, I never have the same days that I'm working every single week. That's just the nature of what I do um, as a, a living, unfortunately. Uh, I would love to be a full-time artist, but I don't get paid. Um, so. I can't at this moment in time. But you know, you never know if I get enough subscribers um, and uh, people start buying my work in my Etsy store um, uh, and uh, things like that. And, uh, you know, I'm certainly getting some paintings uh, sold in the local store. So that's four paintings. Uh, yes, four paintings that I've sold out of seven. Uh, so, you know, things might start picking up and you never know. You never know in the future I might end up becoming a full time artist. And then then I can give you exactly, um, you know, an exact day, an exact time every single week. <laughs> so it looks like everybody. Um, Looks like everybody is in agreement that, um, that, that they're understanding. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, everybody, for um, being so understanding of the situation. 
Um, I have really thoroughly enjoyed uh, this week and last week because um, I think it was about three weeks in a row that I didn't actually have uh, a live because I was working. Uh, so it has been really, uh, really fun to, to be on and chatting to everybody. Now, before I go, I'm going to ask you guys, are there any questions that you would like to ask me? Anything at all. It can be about painting. It can be about um, anything at all. Um, you can even ask me personal questions. If I think they're too personal, I won't answer them. Um, but you can ask away. Give a little bit of a, a, a kind of a short uh, question and answer session uh, before I go. If there's no questions, then I will go and that's fine. Um, uh, maybe what I'll do is a, a call out for any questions uh, that I will maybe do a specific Q and A. And um, for everybody who is in the Creative uh, Tartanite tribe, I do plan to um, do more uh, exclusive videos for you guys. And I was uh, considering doing some live sessions in the group uh, and not just um, recorded. Uh, but we'll, we'll 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 work on that. We'll work on that together. Uh, uh, what's the lineage on the Tower of Pizza? <laughs> ah, the lineage on. Hang on till I Google that, Joe. <laughs> Uh, Mona says, what will the next video on Tuesday be? Oh, no, that's that's actually a very good question. Um, I have the weekend to work on that. I have a couple of uh, videos that I have um, been working on. Um, I'm toying with the idea of it being the um, ATC video, but I don't know if it will be because I am also... Um, giving the video to um, the Art Sherpa to upload uh, somewhere else. So I'm not sure if it's a good idea to put that video up on YouTube as well, because what I don't want to do is I don't want to put people off uh, from watching the videos, because um, if they've already seen it on a different platform, they may not watch the video again, which would then potentially um, cause problems uh, with my... Um, with my ratings, uh, so I need to be careful with that one. So it may or may not be um, the uh, the Art Sherpa um, ATC video that I have just uh, got finished record. Well, finished editing today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, Chrissy's um, asked me a question. Uh, so where's her question? Uh, what medium do you prefer? Um, I take it you're asking in terms of uh, the general term medium and not mediums that I use within the mediums. Uh, so in terms of what is my favourite supply to actually work with medium? I don't have a um, above all else favourite. I do tend to favour working with acrylics um, at the moment, but that's not because it is necessarily my favourite. It's just because I'm I'm on a roll with the acrylics, and I'm I'm really starting to see a difference in my work. Um, but I I do love working with um, watercolour as well. I just haven't been working with watercolour as much. Um, so once this painting is finished, um, I actually plan to do this same face. Um, it, well, I was planning to do the same face in watercolours. I may change my mind. I may decide that I'm actually um, fed up painting the same face. I don't know. Um, but uh, I am after this painting, I am going to do um, the next 
uh, portrait as uh, a watercolour portrait. Now that should be fun because it's been a long time since uh, I've done a watercolour painting and um, it, uh, it could potentially go horribly wrong. Um, so hopefully that's answered your question. It looks like uh, it has. Um, Chrissy says watercolour hates me. <laughs> There's always one nemesis, isn't there? Um, the other medium that I'm going to um, feature on the channel uh, very soon as well um, is uh, pan pastels because I am happy to say, absolutely delighted, thrilled, and woohoo, I found my pan pastel tools. I knew I'd put them away somewhere safe, I just didn't know where. And it's funny because I had I planned to go out somewhere and I was like, oh, I wonder what I've done with my bag. I better go find my bag so that I can put my supplies in my bag so that I can take them with me. Um, and so I hunted for my bag and I got my bag um, and I took my bag out and went, oh, what's this in here? And it happened to be this box. So I am going to quickly show you what pan pastel tools look like. Um, Mona's saying that she's going to try and do the 29 faces. Yes, 29 faces. Of course, that's going to be starting very soon. That's on the 1st of February that's starting. I might try that. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I think I might try that. Uh, I'm trying a face in watercolour with some really dark shadows, but I'm going to going. I'm doing something wrong because she looks like she has a beard. <laughs> um, okay, uh, perhaps it's the tone, um, or perhaps it is. Um, maybe it's looking more like mud than actually a dark tone. Uh, maybe if you try choosing slightly different colours for your shadows, so rather than looking at darkening it with a brown, um, which could potentially end up making look like uh, a, a beard, is maybe look at, say, something along the lines of a, a, a purple, perhaps. Um, purple is usually a very good um, colour, uh, not necessarily a dark, dark purple, um, but uh, maybe a lighter, um, you know, use lots of water um, and maybe try um, a purple uh, to uh, use as a, a, a shadow um, in the area. I don't know if that's uh, any help to you, um, Michael Ann, um, but uh, it, it could be um, that it is down to the fact that maybe your colours that you're choosing when they're actually mixing on the paper are kind of turning a little bit more mud, um, which could uh, be potentially making it look uh, like she's wearing a beard. I could be wrong. It may not be that, um, but that could be one um, possibility. Um, Yes, Mona does do um, some awesome faces in watercolour. Um, okay. Oh, I missed um, one of Chrissy's comments as well, um, saying that she's okay with ink tents, though. Yeah, I um, I haven't used my ink tents pencils for a long time. And I think some of the, um, uh, you can see my, my tools here now. I think some of the um, the plans for the channel is to really look at um, trying different um, mediums again uh, and um, giving it a kind of broader look um, of what's possible with portraiture, keeping the, the portraiture theme, uh, uh, but uh, looking at it from the different mediums. So these are essentially, oops, these are called soft tools. Now, these are S-O-F-F-T. That's the, the brand name. Um, and they're, they're basically um, like little mini palette knives with like a, a, a foam a foam thing that 
sticks on the top. Now I can take this off. See, there's the, the plastic. And then they just stick on. So that's kind of the equivalent of your, your bright. So it's your, your sort of um, rectangular shape. Then this one is um, possibly um, more your kind of, um, I don't know, your cat's tongue, perhaps, maybe a filbert, but it's a little bit more pointy. Um, this is a much rounder one. Um, so, you know, these two could be considered your sort of filberts. But again, oh, wrong way. They are both. Um, this one's well actually stuck. Here we go. That's it. Just plastic with a foam top on it. And then this one, this one's your detail. Now, I don't know if you can see that, if it's going to focus or not, but I've used this so much that you can see the damage on the foam. So I've actually got new ones. So that, that is what I use uh, for my pan pastels, or as the Americans like to call them, pastels. Uh, right. Oh, you're very welcome, Michael Ann. Um, Chrissy says, never give up. Um, I had to hide from my watercolours. <laughs> uh, yeah, just temporarily, though, Chrissy, I'm sure. Um, so Mona likes to use watercolours first and then use some colour pencils and maybe some gel pens to do some touch up. That's also um, a really good way to work with watercolors. Um, Mark says, I love watching others use pan pastels. I've not tried them yet myself. Um, pan pastels is something else I do not want to try, but I also like to see others use them. And, you know, it's, it's absolutely fine if, if we want to stick to what we know and, and like best, then we're all individuals after all. Uh, and uh, if you still like watching them, then great, because it means that I won't lose you as a viewer. Um, Michael Ann says, yeah, hard to practice both at the same time. Oh, there we go. Um, I've missed a comment, that's why. Um, Just want to get better with oils, right? I've missed another comment. Um, oh, right, okay. Michael Anna is saying uh, you should try them again. Um, so yeah, it, it's it can be one of those things. Like um, years ago, I tried to learn how to crochet, and I could not learn how to crochet. Um, so I was convinced that I just couldn't do it and I just didn't crochet at all. Uh, and then as an adult, um, I just had this random thought of, do you know what, I'm going to try crocheting again. And lo and behold, I found that I could crochet and crochet very well. Um, here is Melvin the Bear. Um, he is my studio artist. Uh, he's even got his own brush. But as a, you know, as a teenager, um, I could not crochet, couldn't get a hang of it, couldn't, couldn't get a grip with um, where I was actually having the, the yarn or um, the wool, as we call it here, or, um, you know, being able to hold the, the, the hook and uh, keep the tension and uh, couldn't do it, just could not do it. Um, even with knitting, I could knit, but I couldn't fix my knitting. So if I dropped a stitch, it was always, Mom, can you help? Even when I didn't live with her, I'd be like on the phone, Mom, can you fix my knitting? So, you know, we, we don't always necessarily um, believe in ourselves, perhaps. Uh, and uh, maybe that's one of the, the, the barriers. Um, and um, so we, we put it away and we 
we don't think about it again. Um, but sometimes every now and then we change our minds and we get something out and we start to um, work with it again. I mean, when I first started working uh, with um, acrylic paint, I could not work with acrylic paint. I just stuck to my watercolours. Um, I really, um, I was, I, I thought, oh, great, you know, I'm clearly a fraud here and I call myself an artist and I can't use acrylic paints. Um, but now look at me. You know, um, it's it's one of those things. But equally, it's also OK for you not to try again. If you don't want to, don't. Simple. We're, we're all individuals. Um, so, OK, apparently I've got my pronunciation spot on. <laughs> Oh, Mona, thank you. Thank you so much. That's such a sweet thing to say. Oh. Um, Chrissy says, I love all art. If someone creates something, I think it's wonderful. Yeah, I I love um I love creating. I know that um primarily I tend to do more uh portraiture work, I tend to do more painting. Um, but I have even started um, doodling and um, creating more um, whimsical and cartoony um, stuff uh, for, for my journal and things because I, I, like, I like creating. And it's one of the reasons why I have the um, creative um, Tartanite tribe because <laughs> YouTube is a bit fickle. I'm not saying you guys you guys are watching me today and you're awesome and you've all mentioned this before about how understanding that you actually are but in terms of the algorithm and um, people actually finding my work and things if I vary my videos too much I will find that um, people don't watch uh, they don't like and um, I don't get the views I did December daily um, in December and I put all the, the, the videos on YouTube. Maybe I should have just put all the videos in my Creative Tartanite tribe because I actually noticed a drop in my subscribers. And I suspect that that's probably because I went from being a painter to doing a lot more paper craft and on a daily basis. Um, so it's, it's really difficult to be as diverse as I want to be. Um, as far as I'm concerned, creativity is exactly that. It's creativity. It's anything. It's painting. It's drawing. It's paper craft. It's sewing. It's knitting. It's crocheting. Um, and um, in the Creative Tartanite tribe, that is where we can be diverse. So we can show off anything that we want to show off that's creative, whether that be baking. Um, you know, um, being creative with uh, icing cakes and um, whether it's sewing, whether it's, you know, anything at all, um, that's that's what the creative uh, the, 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 the creative Tartanite tribe was founded for. It's to gather creative people to who want to live a more creative life. Um, So Mona says, I love uh, doodling. Um, she got a book for Chris. Yes, I've seen some of the um, photographs. That's a pretty awesome book. Um, Chrissy says, I love to encourage people if they don't have confidence, it is a big stepping stone. Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, I really will encourage anybody to be creative in any way, shape or form that they want to. Um, uh, you know, whether that be um, that they are using stamps and colouring in or, you know, whether it be mixed media um, and not drawing anything, it doesn't matter. It, oh, it really, honestly, people, if you're listening, um, and I'd be absolutely surprised if you are still listening at this point right enough, it's been a, it's been a while. Um, but if you don't know this already in your own head and your own heart, please, please just allow yourself to be creative. Stop listening to other people's opinion. 
okay, that kind of maybe sounds like you shouldn't be listening to my opinion either. And maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you should be just listening to you. But when your you is being negative and derogative and, you know, trying your negative voice telling you you're not creative, you're not this, you're not that, um, then maybe you shouldn't be listening to that part. And this is where the conversation can get a little sticky and um, difficult. But honestly, guys, we all have that little negative voice. And, you know, it's fine. It's there. It's there for a reason. It's trying to protect us. And we, you know, we can acknowledge it and we can thank our negativity um, because it is essentially nature's way of helping us to protect ourselves. Um, but equally, there is nothing wrong with rebelling against that negative voice telling us that we're not good, uh, good enough, and yada yada yada. And you know, allowing ourselves to listen to the other side of our voice, the the quiet voice that is telling us to just have fun and just let go and just do whatever we want. If we want to scribble and you know, paint or draw like our five-year-old, um, then, you know, so long as you're having fun, then there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, do not let other people's opinion take away your joy. That's when you don't listen to the opinion of others. Don't let people take away your joy. Honestly. I'm kind of passionate about that, and I'm sorry. Um, I, most of you guys probably don't they you probably have the same philosophy as me um uh, and uh, so I'm probably preaching to the converted already but for those who aren't converted please 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 other people's opinion is none of our business um Yes, absolutely. Gail says, sorry, I missed your live stream again. Don't worry about it, Gail, but thank you for stopping by and saying hello. Hello. <laughs> I do understand that um, being in the UK, uh, in Scotland, obviously time zones, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I really have to to, to watch um, in terms of when I go live. Um, but unfortunately, now is the time that is the most convenient for, for me and for... for um, uh, being able to to go live uh, without interruption. Um, Mona says that we can get advice and opinions from everyone, but in the end, it's up to ourselves. Um, Chrissy says you tell them, Tiger. <laughs> Did you see Michael Ann's question? No, I didn't. Let me just. Um, Let me scroll back up. Question. Can the blending tools be used for hard pastels as well? Um, yes. Yes, they can. Um, there is a certain school of thought that's, and I'm, I'm guilty of this myself, um, is that you shouldn't be using your fingers to blend any pastels because of the oils in your fingers. Um, I'm a bit of a rebel this way. Um, I wouldn't say it's absolutely fine and it's still archival. If you use your fingers, there's potential that the, the oil in your fingers will go onto the pastels. But I've yet to see the absolute that as a definite yes. Um, I could potentially see why that could be a problem, um, but most people, when they're using pastels, when they've actually finished their pastel um, painting, then they will usually spray with a fixative. Um, uh, and so I'm not really 100% sure why there's an absolute don't ever use your fingers to blend. Um, but yeah, I could see that, you know, people um, could potentially benefit from maybe not. Um, blending with their fingers. That is when things like this can come in handy. So um, you can obviously put your pastels uh, onto the paper and you can blend. Um, with pan pastels, um, 
for anybody who, if I can find them, here we are. Anybody who doesn't know what pan pastels look like, this is pan pastel. It essentially looks like eye makeup in a big, big eye makeup jar. Um, and you can use the tools. You can use just ordinary makeup sponges, which that is. Soft also do their own sort of version of the makeup sponges. So there's like little oval ones, there's wedges, there's um, there's round ones, there's all sorts that you can use. Um, but essentially, um, it's just foam. So there is no reason why you can't use these on any other kind of pastels. The differences between the stick pastels and the pan pastels, I am led to believe from what I've read uh, about the pan pastels, is that the pan pastels will layer and mix better than the stick pastels. So you've got your soft pastel, you've got your hard pastel, and you've got your pan pastel. And my understanding from what I've read is that the pan pastels will layer and mix better than your um, stick pastel. Hopefully that has answered your question, Michael Ann. Uh, Gail says, I thought it might be because of the chemicals in pastels not good for us. I guess I guess that could be um, a potential, uh, Gail. Um, what I've read is it's to do with the oils in our fingers. Um, but I, I guess um, anything uh, that we we touch is potentially going to penetrate the, the skin in some way, shape or form. So that could be right. Uh, it could be both. Could be a bit of both. Um, so Jo says that she loves um, velour paper for pastels. Um, my clan says, uh, glad you said no fingers. I would have done that first thing. Uh, they should be delivered today, so more practice. Thanks for the tips. No, you're very welcome. Um, as I said, I am actually guilty of using my fingers. Um, I, I've, I've always used my fingers. Um, it's When I'm using charcoal, I use my fingers. Um, but I guess from a practical point of view, even if you put aside the, the whole kind of, it could be bad for um, our skin, skin it could be that the oils in our um, hands will get onto the um the pastels and and kind of um alter the um longevity of the um finished product um <clears throat> but from a practical point of view our fingers are actually really quite no disrespect men <clears throat> they, they're actually quite thick they're not um the uh finest uh, of um <clears throat> you know smallest of details that we can get with our fingers um, so that's where these tools can really come in handy. Now, the other things that you can use, um, oh, excuse me, uh, with pan pastels is, um, let me just see if I can find them. <laughs> with any pastel rather, is um, stumps, paper stumps. I wouldn't necessarily recommend using these to actually take out of the, the pan uh, and use, uh, but it is possible. It can still be done, um, but you get a really, really, you can get a really fine tip with these um, uh, paper stumps. Uh, and so these um, are also um, a really good tool to have uh, in your arsenal. So, um,
So my client says, I'll use cotton swabs until I get the blender. So yeah, that's that's a good um, a good plan. Um, I have um, the little um, cotton swabs. I also have these. Um, okay, I don't have these. I've lost what I was looking for. Um, I have little um, cotton wool pads. So the little round cotton wool pads, um, they're really thin um, uh, and uh, I've kind of used them. The, the one thing that I will say about the cotton swabs though, um, depending on the make right enough, is that you will find that um, you will end up rubbing the, the sort of cotton wool part off the end, end up with you scraping uh, into the paper perhaps potentially. So just be, um, be wary of that. Um, Uh, Chrissy says, what about toes? Well, do you know, I'm sure uh, there are artists out there who don't have their hands and do use their toes. I know that there are people who can paint with their feet. They put the paintbrush in between their toes and paint. So I don't see why um, there's any reason why there are artists out there who actually paint with their toes. Um, Um, okay. Yes, some when you get a big, when you get a starter set, um, you you can sometimes um get them with it. I personally ended up buying these individually. Um, as you can see, they were bought when they were reduced, <laughs> so I bought them individually. Um, so that's why I went out and bought. Um, these. The other things that you can use is um, if you have any spare makeup, um, you know, the little uh, little foam paddy things that you can get with makeup. If you have them that don't have any makeup on, they're clean ones. You can use them, too. Um, but again, just just be wary um, of uh, how rough you are with them, uh, because even these um, the paper. Um, again, as I said, you may be able to see the damage, uh, even using these on the, the paper that I've got, and it's paper specifically for pastels, um, uh, have actually um, ripped apart the foam. Uh, so... Chrissy says, wondered what them paper stubbies were. Uh, came across them, uh, came across some and tried to write with them. <laughs> oh, good, good one. Well, if you had a little bit of pastel on the, the end of it, I don't see any reason why you couldn't write with them. Um, I use them for blending pencils. Yes, and you can use them for blending pencils. Um, you can um, you can even dip them in um, sort of blending fluid and things uh, to to blend pencils. Um, so yeah, there's there's, oh, there's a, a whole plethora of different things that you can use the tools for. Um, thought of using eyeshadow in my journal. Do you know? Um, I do believe that there are some people out there that who have used um, old eyeshadow because if you think about it. Um, when eyeshadow expires, you're not supposed to put it on your skin. Um, so why not do something creative with it? Why not put it in a journal? Why not? What harm is it going to do? It's in a journal. You're not selling your journal. So what harm is it going to do? So yeah, try it. Go for it. Experiment. Be creative. Mark had a question. Um, oh, sorry, Mark. See, that's the, see, if, if back here, right, I can't see because the writing's too small. If I put my glasses on, it blurs it because I'm too far away because I'm long-sighted.
Uh, oh, okay, sorry, I, I did notice that one. I didn't realize it was a question. Um, I mean, I guess it wouldn't do any harm to have that kind of um, premise. Um, sort of those boundaries because you know if the oils in your fingers do do something to you know ruin the um the archival quality of pastels um then yeah i guess it makes sense to um not do it but I've yet to see anything that actually definitely one hundred percent says that it does ruin the archival quality. And the, the truth of the matter is, it's like um, watercolours, as light fast as watercolours are, and yes, they can last a fair bit of time, there will always be some level of fading. Um, and, and even um, the oil paintings of the great masters, they're still, um, you know, that they're protected, they're put in particular lighting. and you know, most of us are very much that, you know, we, unless we're like worth, our paintings are worth like thousands of pounds, then is it really going to matter that much? Because we live in such a throwaway society, which is a horrible thing to admit. Um, I tend not to try and throw away things if I can at all um, avoid it. I try and recycle them in some way, shape or form. But I think for the vast majority of people, they even with artwork, even original art, they don't tend to keep it. I, I've seen so many paintings, original paintings, that are in like secondhand stores because people have just not wanted them and thrown them away. So I do wonder, is it, you know, is it really worth all this like anxiety about whether or not it will be still around in a hundred years' time? Don't know, just a thought. Um, you know, it's it's just it's just it, it's just a discussion, isn't it? It's not that I'm saying that I'm absolutely right, and you've got to believe me, and you better um, have the same opinion as me because you guys are bound to know by now that that's not the kind of person that I am. I am more than happy to have um, an open and honest discussion and um, take into account people's opinions. Um, So Chrissy says, can't be bothered with makeup, can't see to put it on. <laughs> Do you know, it's funny. Um, I, <laughs> I don't, I'm having difficulty find, being able to see to, to pluck my eyebrows. I know this is a daft thing to admit to live on YouTube, but um, <laughs> I, I'd be in the mirror with my glasses on like that, lifting up my eyebrows so that I can kind of see through the glasses so I can actually see to... <laughs> So yeah, I've not worn makeup in years. Um, I I can't be bothered with makeup anymore. Um, it, makeup used to always bring me out in spots. So I only ever wore it on a rare occasion when I was going out and things. And um, seeing as how I rarely go out these days, um, I, I don't bother with it. So all my makeup is all um, defunct, really. Um, So Gail's saying uh, she'd thought about that too. I'm glad I'm not the only one that's thought that. Um, my clan says, I might try uh, playing today and paint with old makeup, then uh, toss it and use the carry case for art supplies. Well, there you go. Excellent plan, my clan. Um, Gail says, since I'm retired now, I don't wear makeup hardly ever. Um, my clan says, yes, the same. Um, Mona's very lucky and has hardly any brows to pluck. <laughs> uh, Kirstie says, need a monocle to swap eyes. <laughs> oh, dear, what are we like? What are we like? Growing old doesn't come by itself, does it? <laughs> and Rachel doesn't have, yes, Rachel's young. Rachel's, Rachel's just a young whippersnapper. She doesn't have time to do her makeup. 
And my class is I don't pluck too painful. I, I do, uh, and it's because I have a bit of a mono brow. It's um, it kind of gathers in here, um, so I I do tend to um, try and remove some uh, of the the hair. Uh, so Jo says that she's off to cook dinner. See you guys later. Um, and Mona says I got a, a mirror that makes everything larger. <laughs> Good deal to have. Um, right. Well, I I think uh, that's probably a good um time to stop where we are um thank you very much for some really awesome questions um i think that's been some useful information i do hope people have um watched uh, enough of this video to actually benefit from some of the really good information that has actually been shared uh, from you guys uh, and uh, hopefully from from me too um uh, so thank you, um, oh, Helen. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, it, unfortunately, I tend to go live at half past three. Um, so for people who are working and things, they don't tend to get home in time. So I'm sorry. Um, but thank you for popping in and saying hello. I'm just about to say goodbye. Um, it's really lovely to, to see you. Um, watch watch on the replay if you've got a chance to. Um, and um, if you need to skip a little because there has some really, really good information that we've been chatting about just even in the last hour, um, talking about pastels and uh, uh, archival um, stuff, et cetera, et cetera. So um, Gail says, I just had a lot of running around to do this morning. I'll watch the replay. Thank you, Gail. Much appreciated. Um, Michael and says thank you so much for hanging out and answering questions Tanya this was fun um and plucking eyebrows yes <laughs> plucking eyebrows Mona so thank you um as always uh, it has been an absolute pleasure um thank you so much uh, for coming and hanging out with me um whilst I paint um this girl here we're now in stage two. There will be um, a stage three. Um, it just goes to show just how much layering and uh, time and work that actually goes into uh, painting with acrylics. So take care of your mental well-being, guys, because nobody else can. Look after yourselves. Bye for now.